Hello and welcome to another episode of Career Talks. Today I am going to share my experience of being interviewed for a data science job role at Cognizant. And I hope this helps you to gain some experience around what to expect during a data science interview. So without any further delay, let's get started. So right after applying for this opening, I got an email within 2-3 to three days with an invite for a coding test. This test was being hosted on HackerRank platform and I already had an account there. Basically I was using it for practicing Python and SQL problem and therefore I was also feeling comfortable around attempting this test. In the test, there were questions based on Python, SQL, machine learning and statistics. Difficulty for the test was an intermediate level and as expected I cleared it smoothly. So around one week after the coding test, I got an invite for the first technical round. And the very first question asked by the interviewer was, talk about the experience and difficulties for your recent data science or AI project. So far in my career, I have attended around 15 to 20 data science interviews and I was really expecting this question. In fact, most of the times, this will be the very first question that you will be asked. So of course, I had the response already in my mind and I started talking around it. The entire experience of data gathering, feature selection, feature engineering, data cleaning, pre-processing and model building, hyper-tuning, everything that I did in my previous project, I started talking around it. And thankfully, the interviewer as well was quite convinced with my explanation. But this was only first 10 to 12 minutes of the entire interview. Next, I was asked around 30 to 40 machine learning questions for next 45 minutes. And just to give you some basic idea that what kind of questions were there in the interview, I was asked to explain bagging and boosting technique, how to tune a random for model, main differences between a bagging and boosting algorithm, evaluation matrix for a classification and regression problem, regularization techniques, basic statistics, my compatibility with NLP based libraries like NLTK and Spacey, which one I prefer and why, neural network concepts like LSTM, GRU, and finally analytics based cloud services, which I believe will be used in this particular job group. So more or less, this was everything that I was asked for. I was asked for around 40 machines machine learning based questions and that also back to back for like 60 to 65 minutes. Another challenging thing for me was I attended this interview in the middle of a hectic week that also without any preparation. So I was answering all the questions based on my prior experience or knowledge. But the interviewer was very cooperative. He was understanding that I am attending this interview in the middle of my work and he was giving me enough time to give the explanation and that was it. Within this interview, I was not given any kind of programming based questions to solve. Mostly it was around giving an explanation for machine learning based topics. So after three working days from the previous technical round, I finally attended the second round of interview. This particular round was conducted by a senior manager and he was more inclined towards the critical thinking and problem solving side. He asked me questions around that how the outcome or observations from my previous project actually helped the business and what was the ROI. In case you are not aware of the concept ROI, then just for your understanding, ROI stands for return on investment. So let's say we have a particular business that wants to solve a problem with the help of a data science or data analytics team. So the business is definitely spending or investing a certain amount on the data science project or on the data science team itself and let's say after the team completes the project or solves the problem then definitely the business is getting some value from the observations or conclusion given by the data science team and this investment to return ratio is called ROI so please expect this question as well in case you are attending an interview with a senior manager and within this round I was also asked questions around the programming side as so I was also given some Python and SQL problems to solve life within the meeting itself. But to be honest, these were some basic problems. Anyone can solve it who has a coding experience for at least six months. The interviewer also checked my understanding around the OOPS concept of Python programming language and also my experience with app building and deployment part. Although recently in my current job role, I did not build any data science application within past one year. but Parallelly, for the practice purpose, I was working on Flask and Streamlit framework. And I mentioned the same in the interview. 
and it helped me as well. Finally, I was also asked if I'm comfortable or flexible enough to work on Azure or AWS any of these platforms. And since in my existing job role, I am already working within the AWS team, so this part was an advantage for me. By the end of this interview, I was also given chance to ask questions if I have in my mind. So I asked everything that I wanted to know around the job role, responsibility, the kind of team there is, the kind of work which is there with respect to this opening, and little bit about the client as well. So there are few things as I take away. That first of all, you remain calm during this kind of session. Instead of overthinking around selection or rejection, you should be focusing more on giving clear explanation around the questions that you have been asked for. Also, if you are being asked any question that you are not aware of, or maybe you do not recall, please do not waste time over there by remaining quiet. Accept it then and there that you are not able to recall that particular topic and you want to move to the next question. Trust me, this is a very important thing that even most of the experienced people are making mistakes around. If you are being asked 10 questions in an interview, you don't necessarily have to answer all of them. If there are 2-3 to three questions for which you do not have the answer instantly in your mind, please accept it and move to the next question instead of wasting your time. And feel free to ask questions if you are given a chance by the end of the interview. But yes, please do not ask for the feedback straight away. That would not be ethical. Instead, show your curiosity and try to know about the job role and responsibility. Try to ask if it is a new or existing project, if you are going to be a part of a new team or existing team, what kind of domain you will be working for. Is it going to be finance based or a tech client or healthcare or e-commerce, something like that. Whether the opening needs a specific exposure on CNN, NLP or deep learning and which cloud platform you will be working on. If you ask these kind of questions, then the interviewer as well will feel that you have some excitement and curiosity around the job room. This will not guarantee your selection straight away, but this will be definitely an advantage for you to ask questions in this manner. And finally, the next was the HR round. So the first thing within the HR round, I was asked for all the academics and job experience related documents for the BGB purpose. So it is really important that you should have all these documents because most of the times if the BGB fails, your offer letter will be cancelled and then comes the compensation part. So the HR made an offer to me that I did not find good enough. So I tried to negotiate that further. But she mentioned that the amount I was asking for, it was exceeding their budget and therefore she declined it. And I also did not find the offer coming from their side appealing to me. So I had to politely say no to them. After a bit more conversation, the HR stated that she will try to get an approval for the amount that I was asking for from the project head. And this might take around a month. But thankfully I got a call after 7 days and she said that this has been approved. So I got a revised offer after one week of time. But after all this, I still have not made my mind clear around the next career move. However, I still wanted to share this experience with you, especially for those people who are also trying to crack similar kind of job rules. So that was it as per my experience. If you found this video helpful, then please drop a like below. Subscribe to the channel to watch similar kind of content. My name is Vikash and I thank you very much for watching till the end.